most grand officers of the Royal Arch Purple Chapter, most worshipful grand masters or grand lodge officers, county officers, district officers, brethren, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and men, boys and girls. It is my very great privilege as county London Day Grand Master to say a few words in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. The war began on the 28th of July 1914 and lasted until the 11th of November 1918. There is so much that has been written and which can be said about the war, but time here is limited and all I want to do is mention a few things to give you some perspective of what happened and why we should never forget. Difference in foreign policies were to blame for the war, although the immediate cause was the assassination of Austria's Archduke Ferenda. By the end of the World War I, over nine million soldiers had been killed. Nearly six million civilians died from disease or starvation, and almost one million more were killed as a direct result of military operations. In all, the estimate of dead resulting from the war stands at over 16 million. Another 21 million were wounded. Some recovered but were never the same again, neither in body nor mind. Around 11% of the population of France was killed or wounded during the war. Approximately 116,000 Americans were killed, even though the U.S. was only in the war for about seven months. Dogs and pigeons played their part in the war. Dogs were used to carry messages and capsules attached to their body and also carried and placed telegram wares in important areas. Pigeons were regularly dropped into enemy lines by parachutes and then sent back with messages. On Christmas Eve 1914, both sides declared an official truce and sang Christmas carols to each other. Football matches were played in no man's land. This cessation of hostilities was known as the Christmas Truce. However, the following Christmas centuries on both sides were ordered to shoot any soldiers who dared to repeat such activities. Many new weapons of war were invented or used during the World War I. Big Bertha was one of the most famous. It was a 48-ton gun capable of firing a shell over a distance of nine miles. It took 200 men several hours to assemble the gun. Army tanks were known as male and female. Male tanks had cannons and female tanks had machine guns. During the course of the war there was many battles, but of the most significant was Marnine, Gallipol, Jutland, Verdun, the Somme, Passchendaele, the German offensive Amin Medigo. Three of these ten battles were very significant for different reasons. The Battle of Jutland, the 31st of May to the 1st of June 1916. This was the largest naval battle of the First World War and was the only time that the British and the German fleets of battleships actually came to blows. Although neither sides achieved the victory they hoped for, the battle did confirm British naval dominance and secured its control of shipping lanes, allowing Britain to implement the blockade that would contribute to Germans' defeat in 1918. The Battle of Verdun, 21st of February to 18th of December 1916, this became the longest battle in modern history and also one of the costliest battle of the war. The Battle of the Somme, the 1st of July to the 18th of November 1916. This was a joint operation between the British and the French forces intended to achieve a decisive victory over the Germans on the Western Front. For many in Britain and beyond, this battle remains the most painful and infamous episode of the First World War. Throughout the 141 days of this battle, the British advanced a maximum of seven miles. More than one million men from all sides were killed, wounded or captured. British casualties in the first day numbering over 57,000, of which almost 19,500 were killed, making it the bloodiest day in British military history. The Battle of the Somme has particular relevance to your institution. It has been described as Orangeism's greatest triumph and its heaviest defeat. 
Interestingly, the Battle of the Somme commenced on the anniversary of the Battle of the Boyne, another great battle at the heart of Orange identity. At least five Orangemen were awarded the Victoria Cross for gallantry, including Robert Quigg from Bush Mills, for his outstanding bravery on the battlefield. At the launch of the Somme exhibition in the Museum of Orange Heritage in Belfast, the Grand Master of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland, Edward Stevenson, said the institution was proud and honoured to remember its ho fallen heroes of 1916. He went on to say that the Battle of Somme will forever be seared into the minds of Orangeism, given the huge sacrifice by members of the institution on the front line. It is well documented that many orange men went over the top in the heat of the battle, proudly wearing their collarettes or orange ribbons on their uniforms and never returned. In this context, the Lillian poppy, pugnantly, symbolically, as the furs of the generation lost in battle. It is just not people who died or were wounded as a result of the worst war. The old world order was also irreparably damaged. Both both the Austria, Hungarian and Turkish empires were destroyed. From their ashes, a host of new countries emerged in Europe and the Middle East. Russia was racked by revolution and became the first, the world's first community state. Monarchs fell and a new world order emerged with the US developing a league of nations that the end opted not to join. The conse consequences of so many of these political changes still reverberate around the world a century later. Millions of people across the world still feel a connection with the Great War. They knew the people who lives, whose lives were changed by it. They live with its unresolved political legacies. The First World War created a common sense of history that decades later still links people from many nations. For many today, the First World War feels like distant history. The jumpy black and white films the unfamiliar clothes and horses pulling wagons all look like something from a world long forgotten. Yet the last soldiers who fought in the war have only recently died. Only a few of the 1914-18 generation still witnesses the, witness the war, but were too young to take part, are still alive. It can therefore be said that the war is slipping beyond the fringes of living memory. However, if we want to understand the world in which we live today and the sacrifices made by so many for our freedom, then we need to remember what happened yesterday and the work hard and work hard to ensure that is never forgotten. Ecclesiastics chapter three verse one says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Verse eight goes on to say, There's a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. We read in God's word that a time will come when he won't allow wars anymore. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3 and 4 reads, Many people will come and say, Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Looking forward as Christians, we should not desire war, but neither should we oppose government God has placed an authority over us. First Peter chapter 2 verse 17 reads, Show proper respect to everyone, love the brotherhood to believers, fear God, honour the king. Therefore, the most important thing that we can do at all times is to be praying for a godly wisdom for our leaders and those in their authority over us, praying for the safety of our police and the military, and praying for a quick resolution to all conflicts that still exist in our world today and even within our own communities. As orange men and women, let us be proud of our history, but above all, thank God for our freedom. Could I give each and every one of you a warm welcome here today? It's good to see a good, so big a turnout of orange men with us and ladies and band members. And uh, it's a very poignant day for County Londonderry and hosting this commemorative uh, service here today. And so I now hand over to the Reverend.
Joseph Andrews, County Grand Chaplain of County London Derry, and a Deputy Grand Chaplain of Ireland, Brother Joseph. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we bow and worship before you this afternoon. You are almighty and eternal and everlasting. You are absolutely holy and just and good and true. And we come to you in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Redeemer of your people and only mediator between God and human beings. We thank you, Father, that through his death on the cross, through his sacrifice, you reconciled us to you and you became reconciled to us. We thank you that you made him who had no sin to be sin for us in order that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We have gathered, Father, this afternoon to remember with gratitude those who laid down their lives in the cause of freedom during the First World War. We thank you for their courage. We thank you, Father, for their willingness to go when the call of duty came. We thank you, Lord, for the victory that was ultimately gained in 1918. And we ask, O oh God, that as we meet here this afternoon, you will be pleased to pour your Holy Spirit upon us, that this act of remembrance may be a fitting tribute to those who died in order that we might live in freedom and be able to gather here today and to pay tribute to them. These things, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the hymns that characterized the period of the First World War was the hymn that expressed our dependence upon Almighty God. We join together to sing that praise. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal hope.
us hear the word of God. We read from some verses from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received reconciliation. Amen. And may God bless his word to our hearts. At 11 o'clock at night, on the 3rd of August 1914, following declarations of war on one another by many European countries, the United Kingdom declared war on Germany. At 11 o'clock in the morning, on the 11th of November 1918, hostilities ceased as the armistice came in to effect. Between those two dates, the United Kingdom mobilized around six million men, and of those, over 800,000 were killed. That's more than one in 10. The last British death of the war was Private George Edwin Ellison, of the 5th Royal Irish Lancers. Now it's an interesting fact that both the, big, the outbreak and the end of the war was marked by celebrations. Peoples partied in London in an outburst of patri patriotic fever on the night the war was declared. And after the announcement of the armistice, many celebrated victory taking to the streets and partying into the night. But their celebration was mingled with grieving for the men and the women whose lives had been lost. <clears throat> and the impact of that loss of life was so great that 100 years later we still hold official remembrance events around the 11th of November. Today, we remember those who paid the ultimate human sacrifice and were willing to lay down their lives for others. None of them joined up deliberately planning to die, though a great many did not hesitate to put themselves in the way of certain death in order to save the lives of their comrades. The time and the manner of their death was not of their choosing. They died so that their friends and their loved ones, yes, even people whom they did not know, might live in freedom. The scripture says, perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. In the end, what British people had gone to war to defend or to defeat was largely achieved. Their sacrifice was not in vain. And there is no greater human sacrifice than one human being laying down a life for another. To offer to put oneself in a position where that could happen is an act of selfless and great courage. In many ways, it's a reflection of Jesus' willingness to lay down his life for others. The scripture tells us God shows his love for us in this, 
that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were God's enemies. We were hostile to him and, and more seriously, he was hostile towards us. And it's the, the only reaction that a holy God can have against people who have sinned. Jesus came into the world with the intention of laying down his life. And he knew and he determined the very moment when he would lay down his life to bear the wrath of God against his enemies, to turn the enmity of God from us, to reconcile us to God, to bring us into God's great salvation for his people. And three days later, he arose from the dead to prove that this is really true. The scripture says, For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Today, we rejoice in the one who died to reconcile us to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks for the victory won in 1918. And we remember with pride and gratitude those who died in the service of king and country and those who served in the First World War. They shall grow not old as those that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrows we give our today.